Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from Our Space. People have a habit of inventing fictions they will believe wholeheartedly in order to ignore the truth they cannot accept. Unfortunately, this means sometimes good people get caught in those delusions. Today in Our Space, we choose fact over fiction. Up first, ain't nobody got time for excuses. Am I the bad guy? My ex-girlfriend, 20 female, cheated on me, 28 male. I found out she cheated on me during the birth of her first child. The reason I found out she cheated is because the child was Asian and I am white. But when I saw the child, I just stood up and said, it's over between us, and walked out to the car and drove home. I called my best friend and asked for help to get her stuff out in the garage. We even changed locks on the doors. People say I am the a-hole for kicking her out of the house. She is basically homeless at the moment. She moved to this city because of education, and she got no family here. So, I guess she has to move back to her parents? I own the house, cabin, and cars. She lived for free with me. And people say I am the a-hole, bad guy, for kicking her out. This happened over a week ago. Update. I forgot to write. Before leaving the hospital, I asked the nurses to take a DNA test, and my ex denied that she had cheated, but she changed her tone after the results came. I was 100% not the father. A little more info. We both don't live in the USA. My ex is white, don't know if she has any Asian ancestry. We got together when she was 19. She's 21 next month. I'm also white, and I don't have any Asian ancestry. I work at the same hospital where she gave birth as a bioengineer. I'm also educated as a nurse. And because of that, I didn't have to book an appointment for a paternity test. I just couldn't do it myself. Had to have some of my coworkers do it. Normally, it takes around 24 hours to get the answers from the test, depending on how much work there is in the lab. And I don't know anything about the real father. I really don't care. My closest family and closest friends support my side, but I can say that no one had expected her to do this. She just blames it on being drunk and hoping it would be mine. But because of this, I guess she can't finish her education. She's a nerd, only good grades, etc., and now she can't afford to finish her education. But I am also a little relieved the child wasn't mine because I never felt the need to have a child. Our first community reaction comes from NC Deep Diver. I wish more people on here had enough self-respect to do what you did when they find out their significant other cheated on them. Our next reaction comes from Lloyd Best Fan. If she's homeless, it's because she's choosing to be. She can hook the guy for child support or go to her parents. She knew what she was doing anyway. People who blame you for her actions to not be in your house anymore, nor her parents, are idiots at the absolute very best. C. Jordan W1 chimes in. Make sure you're 100% sure the child isn't yours. Genetics can be a funny thing. When my daughter came out, she looked mixed, and I had only been with her dad, husband now, so we had no doubt whatsoever. If it isn't, you are absolutely not an a-hole. Bob Sham adds to the conversation, Sounds like she was using you as a meal ticket for free room and board while she became the village city bicycle. Those people that call you the a-hole, why didn't they step up to provide her with a place to stay or better yet, marry her? Now you know who you need to cut out of your life. Be utterly merciless, even if there's family. Shared DNA counts for nothing but organ donations. Meanwhile, surround yourself with supportive people. Also, get STD tested and send her the bill. Take care. Oh my goodness. I can't believe she blames it on being drunk. That's 100% not an excuse. Shame on her. I don't think you're the a-hole at all, OP. I'm shocked that she felt she could get away with having a baby with someone else. I think the cat would have come out of the bag sooner or later. She was about to drink you dry and definitely use you and abuse you. On the other hand, I think it would be absolutely devastating to be fully prepared to be a dad only to be totally blindsided in an instant. It's hard to believe that people can lie to us like that. They have to be absolutely delusional to attempt to lie or get away with something like that. I mean, obviously you're relieved because, as you said, you didn't feel the need to have a child. So it's a bit different. That being said, I don't think you owe her anything. She should have been more responsible. What would you do? Would you leave or stay? Next, sooner or later, the veil is lifted. My girlfriend that I thought was going on a trip moved in with another guy instead. So I, male, have been dating this girl who we will call Sarah for a couple of months. I'm a dude who's very used to either being in a bad relationships or just being abused in general. But for the first time in my life, things are going really well, like really well. It seemed that she felt the same way because we had even discussed moving in together several times. Well, one day she tells me that she has to help her mother move some things to North Carolina which is a 12 hour drive from us. Not the first time she's done it, no biggie. So we meet up early the day she has to leave and spend the morning together before she heads out. I kiss her goodbye and say I'll see you soon. 
she says the same. Little did I know, that would be the last time I would see her. A month and a half passed and I barely hear from her. Halfway through that period, she deletes all of her social media. So Detective Lycopene is on the case and I start investigating. I later learned from Sarah's childhood friend that she had actually moved in with a boyfriend she'd been dating for two and a half years. The entire angle of helping her mother move was a complete lie. My head was spinning when she told me that. I couldn't believe it. At no point did I ever even consider I was the other guy. Like how could there be someone else we spent so much time together? Like every day. And she was so loving. Everything about this girl was about where our relationship was going. But the most effed up thing was that when I tried to confront her about why she did this to me, she told me that she felt unsafe and that I was threatening her. What the F? Just told me to F off. And that is the story of how what I thought was my best relationship became my worst. I may need therapy now. Edit. There are a lot of suggestions in the comments to contact her boyfriend. I will not be doing that. From what I was told, this dude is some kind of abusive paranoid schizophrenic, and to be honest, they deserve each other. Plus, I have no way to make contact because I don't even know his name. I just know he lives in North Carolina. The effort that it would take to find that information would be better well spent doing literally anything else. I want to extricate myself from the situation and let go. It's going to take time to get over Sarah, but she is a deeply mentally ill individual. I hope she gets the help she needs. Because honestly, I was the one of her biggest social supports, and this guy is now the one person she is depending on to be able to survive. Good luck with that. Our first community comment comes from Adrian Fans. You should send any pics you have of you and her to her boyfriend and tell him that you guys were dating, if possible to ruin her relationship. You can't just be the one being hurt all the time, dog. Minute Box 3852 adds in, tell her boyfriend with screenshots and all the evidence you have. She's a horrible, deceitful person and she will continue to cheat. He deserves to know what he's dating. Beerzykins thinks, she's known to be dishonest. Saying you were threatening was also a lie to cover up her own behavior and blame you for it. Sorry I ended up that way, but you eventually found out she was a dishonest narcissist. Ultimately, a bullet dodged. It's hard sometimes to simply value the time you had and move on, but this is her true self. The OP responds, Yeah, it was a dodged bullet. The person I fell in love with was essentially an illusion. It still hurts because you missed that illusion, but my logical brain understands that this dude is going to be in a world of pain letting someone like that into his life. He's going to get reamed hard. Honestly, OP, I think she said those nasty things about feeling unsafe because she couldn't take responsibility for her own choice and decisions. In her mind, she needed to make up these delusions to feel guiltless about leaving and breaking your heart. A lot of people can't handle the truth, so they bury it all under tremendous lies. They can't help themselves. They're fearful about who they are and what they've done. I'm so sorry the carpet was totally swept from underneath you, OP. It's hard to face something so horrendously deceitful. I honestly think it's best just to leave her and her new boyfriend be and not get caught up in that toxicity. But you're absolutely right, OP. It's natural to miss the illusion. But I'm thankful you aren't trapped in the illusion any longer. How would you have dealt with this? Let us know in the comments below. Meanwhile, up next, this brother-in-law likes to stir the stew. My brother-in-law told my husband's mother that I was cheating on him with an old boyfriend. Okay, so here's some facts. My brother-in-law is hilariously insane. He called my mother-in-law and told her I was in contact with an old boyfriend, which arguably I am, but my husband knows that and it's nothing awful or sexual. The old boyfriend is also an old friend and we still talk because, well, shoot, we're friends. I know, quite a concept. He also told her that I was currently sleeping with said old boyfriend, which I'm obviously not because one, I don't do that, and two, he lives on the other side of the country. He also told her that when I finish school, I'm going to leave her son, my wonderful husband, because I'll be too good for him. All of this in a 30 minute phone call because my husband stopped taking his crap after dealing with it for so long. I just thought it was funny enough to share, and myself, my husband, and my mother-in-law are all having a good laugh about it. The community wants to laugh too, starting off with Who Kitty 9 Good to hear your mother-in-law isn't buying his BS. The OP replies, Yes, she's quite wonderful. Honestly, I don't know what he was thinking. My mother-in-law and I have a great relationship. Kay Floki says, I never understood just cutting off contact with every ex. You spend so much time with someone, why not stay friends? Unless they were a right old prick, then it's fair to do so. I did that with one that was cheating on me and two other people at the same time. SHK04 says, It's really weird. Falling out of love is not equal to hating, but some people aren't mature enough to realize this. The OP replies, Exactly. My ex and I were friends in junior high, dated in high school, broke up in college, and returned to friends shortly after because it was a mutual breakup after we simply decided we weren't right for each other. 
for various not important reasons. Hazardous Ed says, isn't it obvious? He had the hots for you and it's eating him alive that you are with his brother. My guess is he plans to break you and your husband up and then swoop in to take care of the mess. Is your brother-in-law a neckbeard? Sounds like something a neckbeard would do. The OP replies, he's been married to his wife for 20 years. However, I won't say it's been all sunshine and rainbows for them for various reasons. And I'm not sure he's a neckbeard specifically, but he does have one. He's more of a country hick neckbeard. Sometimes it's hard for people to fathom that one can be friends with their ex as OP, but it's certainly not unheard of. More importantly, I have a feeling that your brother-in-law tried to stir up crap because he's jealous of the relationship that you and your husband have, and possibly the relationship that you and your mother-in-law have. It seems like he's trying to direct the attention on you as if he's hiding something about himself and or his own marriage. It's easy for someone to tear another person down, like your brother-in-law is doing to you, because they want to make themselves feel better. As if creating this fantasy world and having people buy into it will actually make reality better in the end. Fun fact, it doesn't. Lies build up and catch up to people. Sooner or later, whatever he's trying to hide will come to the surface. What a fool. Do you know anybody like OP's brother-in-law? Let us know your experiences in the comments below. Moving on, our next OP offers some words of wisdom. For anyone who's lost their sparkle. Your sense of humor. The way in which your eyes would light up when you spoke about something you're passionate about. Those things might be lost beneath a cloud of pain, insecurity, and self-doubt. But they're still there. Being cheated on broke me. I stopped doing silly dances at wedding parties. I stopped saying the weird but lovable things that make me me and chose to be safe and neutral. I became the person who people thought was nice and polite, but that was it. I started to find it harder to make friends and connect with others because I didn't have much substance to me anymore. After four years of staying with my cheating ex and burying my real self, I forgot who I was. It was impossible to love myself because there wasn't a real person left to love anymore. Eventually, I made the decision to choose me. What followed has been the hardest four to five months of my life but I finally found me again. This weekend, I danced like an idiot at a wedding party and I didn't even have to think about doing it. It just happened naturally, and friends and mutual friends gravitated towards me more like they used to. A couple of friends even cried and told me how wonderful it is to see me being me again. Today, I've spent the day crying, partly because of the grief and feeling sad about being single, but also because I feel like I've finally honored myself. My ex didn't love himself enough to love me properly, and I didn't love myself enough to leave. It's not because I wasn't enough. For anyone that's going through a breakup or the grief of being cheated on, please don't let someone else take away your sparkle. The wonderful things that make you, you. Those are things that your partner was attracted to and loved enough to want to get into a relationship with you. What happened after is purely a reflection of how they feel about themselves, even if they try to deny this and blame you for their choices. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, OP. You're absolutely right. We should never dull ourselves for anyone else, or change ourselves for that matter. The person we are meant to be with will love us unconditionally. They will gladly drink up every single ounce of us and be proud to hold our hands, dance with us, laugh and snort, and they'll embrace our best and worst days. I'm so sorry you had to go through all of that to find yourself again, but I guarantee you've come out a stronger and wiser individual. You know what you deserve, and I don't want you to ever settle for anything less. Continue to embrace you and this will attract the most beautiful love you could ever dream of. Thanks for joining us today on Our Space. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Also, we want to hear from you. Please let us know what you thought of today's content. See you next time.